You're listening to Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. Old Man Metal's Musings is a proud part of the Rat Salad Review Network. And now, without further ado... Hey, this is Old Man Metal. I hope everyone's doing well, and welcome to the seventh episode of Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. And today we're going to talk about a new feature, the hot sauce of the month, and then we're going to check out the first hot sauce of the month, and then we'll take a look at some new black metal from My Grief and Old Cracker. So thank you for joining me today, and thanks to everyone who watched the sixth episode. It was a hell of a push to get it done. I shot video of my New Year's Day top 10 countdown for album of the year that I do on Twitter, and I filmed it, edited it, and got it released on the same day, and that's the fastest I've ever pushed a video out by far. It was an ambitious goal to set for myself at the beginning of the year, and I'm really pleased with the fact that I accomplished it. Um, I really enjoyed making that episode, and I've gotten a lot of really good feedback on it, so give it a look if you haven't seen it yet. And as always, I want to give a shout-out to AJ Nemesis for the theme music. That's a song called Through the Electric Mist. AJ just dropped a new album on YouTube, so definitely check that out. The link to his channel is down below in the show notes. And now we're going to take a look at today's show beer, and that is... Hellstar Dark Lager from Burial Beer Company up in Asheville. And as always, Burial. Double the artwork, double the fun. And as usual for burial beers, like it said, it features some really awesome artwork from David Paul Seymour. And recently he was asked about Burial's distinctive opposing front and back artwork. And he said, it's the dark side and the light side. One's a little more beautiful and flowery, and the other is more about death and dying. Nasty insects, more skulls and bones. The idea is that life is amazing juxtapositions. Life, death, dying, rebirth, light and dark, yin and yang. Um, as is also usual for burial beer, the cool looking can has some really awesome liquid inside of it. And in this case, it is a Munich Dunkel Lager, which is a German dark lager style that falls somewhere in between a Vienna lager and a Schwartz beer. It's the traditional brown lager style of Munich, and because of the Munich malts, it's darker, richer, and more complex than the other traditional regional German brown lager styles. But it's not dark, dark, and roasty like the Schwartz beer style. Uh, Munich Dunkel Lager is going to be a decidedly malt-forward beer, but with enough classic German hop character that's going to be somewhere between spicy, herbal, and floral. Uh, enough of that uh, hop character to keep it from being too sweet. The malt can show on the palate as toasty or slightly caramelish or nutty, but not roasty. And sometimes on the nose, you'll get some hints of chocolate or toffee. The mouthfeel is typically soft and medium to medium full-bodied. For all that being a lager, um, it should be a cleanly fermented beer with a crispness and a drinkability that you wouldn't get from a brown ale with the same malt profile. Uh, the ABV is typically going to be 4.5 to 5.5%. And I've put a link to the BJCP style profile down in the show notes if you want to learn more about this particular style. In this case, well, Burial absolutely nails the style. Um, so cheers to Burial for making it, and cheers to Best Way for stocking it, and cheers to you for being here. And I hope you're drinking a good beer with me today. And as always, when I say good beer, I mean a beer that you enjoy. Now about that Hot Sauce of the Month Club. For the third year in a row, my brother has got me a membership in a Hot Sauce of the Month Club for Christmas. It's from the Heat Hot Sauce Shop, which is a great family-owned shop run by Real Chili Heads, and they spend a lot of time actively tracking down great new hot sauces, like what I do with metal. 
If you follow me on Twitter, you've probably seen me talk about them. And if you're into the heat, I can't recommend these guys enough. So I'm going to put a link to their store in the show notes below. This is a completely uncompensated endorsement. Um, so they have two options for the Hot Sauce of the Month Club. There's Normal and Extra Hot. And of course, my membership is the Extra Hot one. The selection that they send out is really well curated. Uh, I've never been disappointed with anything that they've sent out in the last two years uh, since I've been getting the hot sauces from them. And the packaging is really good, too. It's actually better than really good. It's really secure. I don't think the worst shipper on the planet could mess up one of their packages, so that's always good when you're getting hot sauce in the mail. So I figured since I'm getting a great new hot sauce that I've never had before every month, I might as well share that with y'all. So that's what we're going to do. And if you follow me on oldmanmetal.com, you've seen me do beer reviews and hot sauce reviews. And that's what I'm going to do today, an ASTMO review. And that's appearance, smell, taste, mouthfeel, and overall. And the first hot sauce of the month is Ex Horesco Hot Sauce from Burns and McCoy. And so looking in the package, we've got the bottle of hot sauce. Give it the spot of honor there. Hopefully you can see that good on the beer can. And um, do notice, uh, since it's another year of the Hot Sauce of the Month Club, that's a welcome card. Don't get that every time, obviously. And um, this time, sometimes there's bonuses. A um, couple of packs of this uh, Palo Alto uh, ghost pepper sauce, I think it is. Excuse me. Yep. So it's a couple of packs of uh, Palo Alto ghost pepper sauce, and there were actually three of them, but I already used one of them on some eggs, so um, that is what it is. And these guys, uh, this is a fundraiser hot sauce. These guys, it's a fire department in California, and this is a fundraiser for them. And the ghost pepper sauce, for a ghost pepper sauce, it's not super hot, but it's got really good flavor. They make a regular sauce that's really, really good. Their regular sauce is really heavy on cumin. Um, it's sort of like the spicy oil that they give you at Wendy's to put on the chili. It's just really heavy on cumin, so it's really good. So sometimes they give you a bonus. And the other thing that you always get from Heat Hot Sauce Shop is a tasting card for whatever the hot sauce of the month is. And we get a little focus on that there. So what they say this time is um, one of the hottest natural sauces we've ever tried Ex Horesco features the searing heat of seven pot primo peppers along with oak aged cider vinegar, yuzu juice, and black garlic. Food pairings, stir fries, pizza, or anything else that needs a serious dose of excruciating pain. So that could be pretty much anything. So that's what it looks like. And right off the bat, I know this is going to be a son of a bitch. Because, number one, the tasting notes say it's the hottest natural or non-extract sauce that they've ever tried. And that's saying something because the people at Heat know hot sauces. And number two, the first ingredient is the seven pot primo pepper. So, in the United States, on food labeling, the first ingredient listed is the ingredient that is the most prominent by weight in the recipe. Not only do you have to list the ingredients, but you have to let people know what there's the most of, and the second most, and the third most. A lot of times when you see a really spicy hot sauce, you'll see that there are maybe other types of peppers that are in second or third place. Usually the vinegar or whatever the liquid is will be in the first place. Uh, sometimes it's something else. And a lot of times the really hot pepper will be down third or fourth. Um, on this one, it's first. So there's more by weight of these peppers in this sauce than there is anything else, including the vinegar that is the carrier. Um, so... I know it's going to be really hot because it's a lot of these really hot uh, Primo 7 pot peppers or 7 pot Primo peppers. And what that is, I had to look it up. It's a stabilized hybrid that was created by a horticulturist in Louisiana named Troy Primo. And it's a cross between the Nagamorich and the infamous 7 pot pepper. So when I say a stabilized hybrid, I mean that it's a hybrid that's been crossbred, crossbred down or bred within itself down, down, down to the point that it's a stable hybrid. Um, hybrids start if you take like two different types of peppers, say uh, a particular type of jalapeno and a particular type of serrano, and you crossbreed them, you pollinate one with the other, then you're going to get seeds that are what's called an F1 hybrid, the first generation hybrid. And if you go back the next season and cross those same two plants, you'll get the same hybrid. 
uh, that same at the F1 will behave the same. But if you take the two plants from the F1 generation, two hybrid plants, and cross them, you're going to get an F2 generation that's going to be all sorts of different things genetically. All the different possibilities are going to pop up in that F2 uh, generation or close to it. And then if you keep interbreeding them, interbreeding them each generation, if, and you do selective breeding where you're picking the plants to be the way you want them to, eventually they'll stabilize into something that will reproduce with itself and do the same thing time after time. So that's what I mean when I say it's a stabilized hybrid. This guy has taken this and bred it and bred it and bred it to the point that you can buy these seeds and they'll produce the same pepper every time. So... The two peppers that are bred to create this seven pot primo are the Naga Morich and the Trinidad seven pot pepper. And the Naga Morich is the ghost pepper's big brother. It's a naturally occurring uh, cultivar. It clocks in at up to 1.5 million Scoville heat units. And the seven pot pepper, which is a native cultivar of Trinidad, can rate up to 1.2 million. Uh, so both the parents are really, really, really hot. Well, they're both naturally occurring super hots, and they both have long traditions of culinary use, so they're both known for their flavor as much as they are for their heat. So in theory, this sauce should be really, really, really tasty. And like the ghost pepper, the Naga Morich is uh, reputed to have about 30 seconds of creep before the heat sets in where you can actually taste it. So hopefully the same is true of this seven pot primo, and I'll be able to taste the sauce before it shuts me down. Um, we're going to find out. And we're going to find out right now. And that is not going to work because that's right in the way of the beer cam. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, I have not opened this. I had opened the package to do some photography, which you've already seen uh, in the background of the hot sauce. But I have not opened the hot sauce itself. So I'm going into this completely blind, except for the fact that I know what it's made out of, and I know the seven pot peppers are the primary ingredient. So I know it's going to be hot as a son of a bitch. And we're going to find out what it does. So appearance-wise, um, it is a brownish red, brownish liquid. Um, it's got some viscosity to it. It's not super thick. It's not super thin. Um, it appears to be uh, fairly uniform, but you can see there are some seeds in it. I guess you can see that there are seeds in it. And I shook it up good, so we're just going to pour a little bit out to this little spoon here so we can take a look at it. Oh, wow. Just don't want to make a mess with this stuff. So, appearance-wise, like I said, it's fairly homogenous. It's uh, dirty brownish red. Um, it's got some seeds in it. It's uh, moderate viscosity. Um, the aroma or the smell in the ASTMO, the S. Mm, wow. I can smell the vinegar. I can smell the peppers. Sort of a... Uh, a uh, Worcestershire savory meaty roast note, which is probably from one of the peppers. Definitely smell the vinegar. Ah, definitely got some vinegar tang. So just peppers and some roast notes on the nose and some vinegar. The vinegar is real obvious. Um, so taste. This is going to be the fun part he says. I have got me a wing, a chicken wing fried hard. Not so hard, but you know what I'm saying, hopefully. And um, it was cooked just with some salt and some pepper and with some olive oil, so there's no flavor to it. There's no heat to it. And... I'm just going to slather some of our little sauce on here. And that's a pretty good amount. Um, it's actually not a whole terrible amount of sauce, but knowing how hot this is, it's probably going to be plenty enough. Uh, so let's see what the hell happens with this. Hmm. 
Mm. Taste the peppers, taste the vinegar, taste the yuzu juice, whatever the hell that is. I'll get some more of it here. Let's try to do this where you can see what I'm doing, shooting kind of blind. So, it's got, oh yeah, Ooh. it's got sort of a Swedish vinegary taste like you would get maybe from a fruited vinegar. Maybe that's from the, the cider vinegar, the barrel-aged cider vinegar. Um, I came prepared. I got more than one chicken wing. So now, all that that you saw me pour out in the spoon, when I get this back, I will have ingested all of it. Taste the agave, the sweetness, the peppers. Mmm. The peppers sort of have a, a smoky, roasty flavor. Um, I'm not getting that played out ghost pepper flavor that I'm so tired of, so that's a nice thing. Um, the heat levels are not inconsiderable. Most of the burn is in the front of my mouth. You can see I'm sweating. Most of the burn is in the front of my mouth. Um, the roof of my mouth, the tongue, midway back, not really the back of the tongue. Getting a little bit on the lips, um, not too much. I'm going to be really stupid. It's got a fruit tartness and a sweetness and a bitterness. It's got an interesting flavor. Um, and you can definitely taste it. There's definitely, every time I hit it, there's maybe 10 seconds of lag before the heat really starts to kick in. And now from that last little bit that I got, it's really starting to kick in good. Um, Heat-wise, I'd say it's a an 8. Maybe a little bit higher than an eight. It's coming in good now. If you've eaten um, the ghost pepper chips from Packy, the haunted ghost pepper chips, um, the burn's a little bit more than that. So maybe an eight and a half. Um, pretty good, pretty considerable burn. The whole tongue's involved now. The whole front of my mouth, I'm sweating good. Um, it's got an interesting flavor. You definitely pick up the vinegar. You pick up the, the whatever fruity little juices in there. It's sweet, sour, um, and a little tangy at the same time. The peppers have a good flavor, a little bit of smoke, but not anything. Um, like I said, I'm really to the point where it goes peppers. I don't care if I never taste another ghost pepper again. Um, and it doesn't have that funky flavor. So that's a good hot sauce. Um, it's definitely hot. You would not want to use a whole lot of it. And it's, it's still burning me up pretty good. It's good. I like it. I'm going to give that a two thumbs up. Good flavor, good burn. Um, it's got a little bit of creep to it. Like I said, about 10 seconds of creep. Um, good, strong intensity. Uh, mostly front of the mouth, mid mouth burn. And I'm, I'm looking at my monitor. I can see the sweat on my brow right now. Um, viscosity versus heat level. That's another thing I, I, I like to look at. A really hot sauce needs to be able to not pour too easily. I'm going to be honest with you. That's probably not enough viscosity for how hot that damn sauce is. That probably should be thicker for how hot it is. You could really fucking ruin some food with that. I mean, if you dump too much of this, you're not going to be able to eat it. Oh. Yeah, I'm getting some good some good uh, afterburn now, too. Mm. So, haven't done that. Uh. I'm going to go back to my old beer cam here, and um, I'm going to tell y'all, I was prepared with my coffee creamer, 
in the event that I needed it, but I'm not going to use it because this is not so bad that I can't survive it. And it's, uh, it's still burning pretty good. That last dose, I got a good dose of it. And when I licked that spoon, got it all coated all over my tongue now. But um, I figured out if you haven't watched the uh, uh, episode four, I think it was, where I did the Packy One Chip Challenge, um, that uh, coffee creamer is what ended up saving me. So I said, well, I'm going to have that available in case I need it because this stuff, I was expecting it to just blow the top of my head off, which it's really hot, but not too terribly bad. Um, so that's the hot sauce of the month. Um, get one of these a month moving forward. I'm going to try to integrate this into a podcast where I've got one to look at, do the same thing. Look at the, the sauce, the peppers, where it came from, who made it, try to learn a little bit about it, learn a little bit about the peppers. And then we will, um, do an ASTMO tasting and, uh, you can watch me roast myself out and, uh, tell you live or sort of live what I think of it. Um, completely unrehearsed and unscripted and all that good stuff. So, Changing gears, uh, now we're going to take a look at some black metal. And <clears throat> I should have just kept going. I meant to just keep going. And now we're going to take a look at some black metal. It's a collaboration between Norway's My Grief and Florida's Old Cracker. Uh, Old Cracker shared this track with me, and I really liked it, and they were willing to let me use it in its entirety, so we're going to check it out. Um, I'm not a huge black metal fan for all that I love. A lot of the black hybrid stuff, black thrash, black speed, uh, to a lesser extent, black death. Um, but listening to this, I really enjoyed it. Um, a lot of times there's black metal can be more about atmosphere than it is about riffing. That's not always true. It depends on the style of black metal, but that's one of the things I really am into riffs and I've got to have riffs. And I think this song is a good balance between riffs and really cool structure, different elements and atmosphere. So I think it does, uh, what it's intended to do really well. I really enjoyed it. So not being a huge fan of black metal, not knowing, not being a black metal expert, I'm not going to break this song down like I usually do. If I'm looking at death metal or thrash or death thrash or black thrash or black speed or the stuff that I listen to, I usually get fairly in depth, break stuff down. And um, not being an expert on black metal, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. It would just be ridiculous for me to, to try to take this song apart and show you what it is and what it does, because I don't know enough about black metal to really be able to say that. So, what I've done is I've made one of my little music videos that I like to do with, uh, with Milk Drop. And it's the longest one of these videos that I've done because typically I'm just doing those videos for a uh, 30 second or 45 second clip. In this case, I did the whole song. And the way I do those things, I've got about 300 different presets for uh, Milk Drop. And the presets are the different patterns and different things that go on on the screen and how they change and all that. Those settings are called presets. I've got about 300 some different presets. So when I'm first starting to do one of those, the first thing to do is listen to the song, the different parts of the song, try to get a feel for what's going on, what the song's doing, and go through a bunch of these presets and try to find presets that match the feel of what's going on with the song or match musically what's going on or that respond in a pleasing way dynamically to what's going on because all these presets in Milk Drop are responsive to the music. That's the whole point of a visualization. Um, so in doing one of these things, I spend a lot of time listening to the song, even if it's a 30 or 45 second clip, like I usually do in doing the video that I did for this song. I listened to the whole song at least 30 times bit in bits and pieces, but all together, the whole song, at least 30 times I listened to the whole thing. So I got to know it fairly well, the different parts, how they fit together. And I'm going to say that the more I listened to it, the more I liked it. Um, you know, the more I listened to it, the more I understood what was going on. And um, so in the process of developing the little video that you're going to see, um, I, I got to know the song well enough that I feel like I can say I really like it. I like the composition, the structure, what it's doing. I'm just not going to sit here and look like a fool trying to tell you how it's doing what it's doing. Because like I said, black metals, I'm not an expert. Um, so I'm going to talk about the things that I know about. And for this one, we're just going to check it out and listen to it. And once you play it through, um, go back and play it through a couple of more times, or actually what I'll do is I'll put a link to it down in the show notes, go to the YouTube channel and listen to it like three or four times, just back to back, listen to it, listen to it, listen to it. And the, the more you listen to it, I think the more you'll get out of it. And let me know what you think of it down below uh, in the comments. And, um, I'm going to link to the, uh, I'll do Twitter for Old Cracker and My Grief. Go to their Twitter. Tell them what you think. Tell them you saw it here and tell them what you think of it. And hopefully it's going to be something good. So 
without further ado, from a collaboration between O'Cracker and My Grief, this is Nephilim. <laughs> Nephilim, the new black metal collaboration between My Grief and Old Cracker. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. And want to thank you for joining me today. That's going to be it for this time. Uh, hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about a uh, new hot sauce that was uh, X Fresco hot sauce from Burns and McCoy. And checking out a new feature that we're going to do, like I said, monthly moving forward. Checking out the new hot sauce of the month. Uh, hope you enjoyed the black metal track that My Grief and Old Cracker were so kind enough to share with me and allow me to share with you. Uh, if you've got any thoughts about any of those things, please leave them in the comments below. Love to hear from you. Um, I read all my comments, respond to all my comments, so if you've got something to say, please say it. Uh, otherwise, uh, until next time, this is Old Man Metal. Thanks for joining me. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please tell your friends. And if your friends don't like it, get new friends. Until next time. Keep those horns up high. Y'all take care.
listening to Old Man Metal's musings. All material depicted is the intellectual property of the copyright holders. Any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is a goddamn shame. Thank you for joining us.